Good morning, and welcome to Finally Friday, and it's all about challenging, challenging our feelings, and I do hope that today's programming will be all that you want it to be. And as we are on, we're going to be challenging our feelings. As you know, on Fridays, we always have something to challenge ourselves with. Our phone lines are open, and we're asking the question all throughout the program. What have you been challenged with, past or present? Let's talk about that. This is a place that is safe to talk. This is a place where you're able to share your feelings. And speaking of feelings... We're going to learn the true meaning of being all in our feelings. How does it look for you? And as we face our challenges, we're going to be doing a wonderful assignment that's going to talk about our brain. And our, our, excuse me, our feelings and staying connected to our feelings. So it's going to be a good hour. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Good morning, Trish. Good morning. How are the floods there? How we, uh, it's, it's drying up. It's a sunny day today. So I'm glad for that. Yeah. Glad you guys are safe in the Carolinas. Good morning, and we thank you for being here today. Tell us where you're from. In the top left corner, okay, we are asking you to click that wherever you are. And if you're on this one of our sites, it's going to tell you how to get to our Vibe Talk YouTube channel. And Trish will be putting the information in. So what does it mean when you and I say we're all in our feelings. As you know, life coaching for me is all about showing you better than I can tell you. And we're going to do it right now. We're, we're going to do that right now. So let's get in the mood with our feelings to find out what it means to be all in our feelings. You ready? And we hope that this Friday is going to be something that you can really gain something from. So, feeling our feelings or being in our feelings, we're going to come to a new understanding of that. And how many of you understand that about feeling your feelings? Trish, what do you think about that? I think that 
being in my feelings. Uh, it's about actually feeling my emotions, like taking initiative and in feeling my emotions, like owning how I feel depending on the uh, circumstance or the time. Yeah. Yeah. So let's challenge ourselves. Are you ready? Let's do that right now as we are feeling our feelings. Let's do that. And we're going to take the time to do that now. How to practice feeling your feelings. Feelings are a way for your body and mind to tell you something. Feelings are not right or wrong. They're messages. Anger, fear, sadness, happiness, hope, or peace are just a few examples of the thousands of different feelings we can experience. Would you like to take a moment now to listen to what they're trying to tell you? Let's pick a feeling that's not too intense or overwhelming. So maybe a 5 out of 10 instead of a 10 out of the 10 in intensity. First, I invite you to allow yourself to be right here, right now, in this present moment. As best you can, try to tune out the world around you and any distractions it brings. If helpful, notice where your body is making contact with the furniture or the floor to remind yourself that the ground is there, the ground is stable. This is also an opportunity to remind yourself that you have a body. Feel it breathe. Allow it to breathe. Now, take a moment to check in with yourself. How are you feeling right now? What are you feeling in your body right now? We often feel many feelings at once. See if you can name the feelings that are coming up. If you can't identify one right away, that's okay. Let's bring into focus one of these feelings. I invite you to notice where this feeling is in your body. This may be in one area, maybe more. Simply take note of where it is. Give it permission to be wherever it is inside your body. Can you identify what the feeling feels like? Tightness, pressure, heaviness, lightness, tingling, buzzing. If helpful, you may wish to touch the area of your body with your hand. If you need to, you're welcome to say out loud the sensations you notice. Now, instead of trying to push the sensation away, try to breathe into that feeling or that area of your body. Envision and feel your breath going to that area. Breathe into that feeling. As best you can, allow yourself to feel. This might mean crying, shaking, frowning, smiling, or even laughing. It's all okay. Keep breathing and focusing on your breath. Putting your hand on your heart or on your leg may help you through this. If helpful, you may also bring your attention back to where your body is making contact with the ground. Feel the stability it offers you. As best you can, continue to allow and to breathe into your feelings. As we feel our feelings, you may notice your mind wandering. That's okay. Invite your awareness back to your body sensations, your breathing, and the ground. Perhaps another feeling has become more or less intense. Or you notice more than one feeling at a time. That's okay. 
allow them all to be there. Notice what they feel like in your body. Try to let each feeling stay for a moment, just long enough for you to look at it and be curious about it. And then imagine you are breathing air into it. I invite you to notice, again with curiosity and friendliness, whether there have been any changes in your body sensations. Maybe the feeling has moved. Or perhaps the sensation has changed ever so slightly. Know that you won't feel this way forever, regardless of what you feel in this moment. Continue as best you can to use your energy towards being with your feelings instead of pushing them away. Notice them and breathe into them. Notice and breathe. Notice them and breathe into them. Notice and breathe. Breathing in, knowing that this is an in-breath. And breathing out, knowing that this is an out-breath. Breathing in and out. In and out. In, out. Slowly, and when you are ready, I invite you to bring some of your focus and awareness back to the space that you are in. Perhaps by noticing five things you can see, four things you can hear, three things you can touch, Two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. You did it. You just felt your feelings. You can do this practice whenever you feel emotional or feel strongly about something, or when you're acting impulsively and want to think about it. You can also do this regularly to check in with yourself to see if you've been ignoring any feelings. You can do this at any time just to stay connected to how you're feeling. This may be really difficult for some of you, and that's totally okay. Some of you may find your feelings tough to be with and tough to identify. But with time, practice, and a little patience and friendliness, feeling your feelings will become a little easier. Want to spend more time with your feelings? Consider playing the video again without looking at the screen. You may also want to pause the video or do this practice on your own without the video so that you can take as long as you need. If you're feeling overwhelmed or experiencing an intense emotion, please watch our video, Overwhelmed, Managing Feelings and Racing Thoughts. That, my friends, is connecting to your feelings. Why is it still yet so challenging for us to get connection to our feelings? To understand how it helps or doesn't help. You know those times when you have said, I can't tell anybody how I feel. What immediately follows that is, why can't you? When will you? Or how will you? I'm going to do a very personal reveal about myself. Just in the past week, I have connected with my feelings 
about something. I was able to say what triggered me. And believe me, when you find out what triggers you, it isn't going to be a beautiful sight. Did you expect it to be? Because that's all about connection, knowing how you are, what you're feeling, and why you're feeling that. I was able to say that with the understanding of why I felt the feeling that I felt. Need I say more? Connection to your feelings is very important. You know, we say these words. And if you have said one or more of them, I would like you to write this down today. It's all in your feelings. I I feel some kind of way. I felt that. Did you really? Why are we going on like this? What it is that we need to say is something's bothering me. Come a little closer. What we really want to say is something is bothering me. Everyone get that? When we don't say that we are really cheating ourselves from our own feelings. And what I have done with what happened to me personally is identified the feeling. And sometimes when you're able to express it, everybody's not going to accept it there will be some denial. There will be some resentment. There will even be people who talk you down from feeling that way. But don't you you let them because you, yes you, are in control. By the way, that's our song for today. So understanding yourself, challenging yourself to make it clear about your feelings, communicate them. What is it that's really bothering you? In order to answer and come to grips with that, it takes self-awareness like we understood the video and we thank you for that video self-awareness do you know how you feel at this moment are you stuck at the um oh ah, i don't know i'm not clear i'm all in my feelings i'd like like you to take awareness to know how you feel. Think about it. As I have worked with so many people over the last three and a half years, I have really come to help myself as I help you all. Is it easy? to deal with more of our positive feeling than our negative feeling. If if I ask you right now, if you will imagine yourself, if you can imagine yourself right now, having a delicious plate of food, whatever it is, whatever you're putting on your plate to eat, and I 
say to you, how does that taste? Are you going to be hesitant to give me an answer? Most of you, some of you, none of you, or all of you. But one of you is going to say, that's simple, it's delicious. See how quick we are to respond? But now, if you were angry and upset about something, I have challenged you by asking you, are you ready to hear it? The words, what's the matter? What's the matter? And you say, oh, nothing. What have you done when you do that to your feelings? You are denying yourself. You are pushing down. And you are, in essence, saying you don't matter. Because you do matter. So when someone says, what's the matter? I want you to identify the one feeling that you felt the most and don't ever let anyone deny your feeling. Because after all, they are your feelings. I want you to think about the video and think about what the video asks you. That is, if you are listening. When we say, what are we thankful for? That's a feeling. How many of us have experienced thankfulness? We've experienced thankfulness how many times? How many things surround us that we are thankful for? We are still challenging ourselves with that very question that we ask every day. So I'm going to ask it right now and see if the video helped. And for those of you who are listening all over the world, we know that you do and we're so very grateful for it. What are you thankful for at this present moment? I'll start with me. I'm thankful for for the feeling of freedom, the feeling to finally have expressed what makes me feel unsafe. It has nothing to do with if you love the person or not. It's the action that I was able to say I felt unsafe. Trish, what are you thankful for? And all of you out there, you can even comment on our pages, what you are thankful for. Trish, can you please put in the information for us today? YouTube and everything that you do. Please and thank you. What are you thankful for today? I am thankful for seeing the sun today because all week it's been raining and thundering and heavy wind and actually during the video uh it helped me be present of today instead of being so anxious about this entire week today is sunny and that video actually made me be present and think about you know what it did rain and storm all week but today it's a beautiful day. It's sunny and it's fine. Yeah. You see how we just did that? For those of you who are listening everywhere and anywhere, you are leading your own feelings. You know, even in the past, and that's why we are including past and present, you may have not in the past been able to quite label your feelings. And today's 
art of expression is I want I would like for you guys to draw your brain and I want you to draw it big enough to where you see it I know the brain is as big as a walnut but your brain is amazing the fact that it's able to feel sensation of feelings and I want you to write starting with the very first feeling that you are feeling today and all the feelings you felt throughout your lifetime I would like you to do that send them in and I'd love to see your expression through art I'd like for you to give yourself permission to allow yourself to know what it is that you are feeling without someone taking control how they think you feel because you see my job is important here's my job as a life coach I have a certification to listen without guiding you to tell you how you feel or think I'm not that, that kind of life coach you're able to discover the words to be able to put in your brain to say I feel this way or this way I'll tell you another reveal that happened to me in conversation with another person they were starting to tell me how I felt and I was able to take control of that in state and know exactly how they made me feel the words because you see other people will interpret your feelings to mean something other than what you've said so be clear on your emotion if they say you felt disrespected and you really didn't feel disrespected replace it with what you felt or if they say you felt embarrassed or pissed off or or whatever they say I want you to be able to think about it now how do you put this into place in vibe talk if you have been with us if you're listening to our podcast then you know about the awareness I want you to be aware some people are not even aware there it's like taking baby steps and we don't judge that never, never do we do that but I want you to start thinking about your mind your brain and that's why I want you to draw what you think your brain looks like and I want you to think about presently this day your first feeling that you are feeling present and I want you to be able to be creative and then talk about the other words and I want you to fill your brain up with all of the feelings that you've ever felt that's all one word and every time you feel that way I want you to go and look at your brain because your brain has great possibility and that's why we say practice mindfulness because you have the ability to think about it to become aware to discover to be curious as to why you feel the way you do we ask that, that you pay attention to how you feel the video talked about a tightened chest and then it related the feeling of, of touching and being able to understand the connection I want you to practice 
mindfulness. And use your mindfulness because your mindfulness comes from where? What part of your body? That's right, the brain. It's a muscle. What do we know about muscles? I'm going to go back to the baby stage because that's where all of this starts. Before a baby can walk, they practice and practice and practice. We're going to go even before that. When they start to crawl, they do what is like a everyday movement of legs, movements of arm. They turn over. If you watch it, it's the cutest thing. And before you know it, they start to crawl because they're using their leg muscles. And before you know it, the crawl turns into a walk. So what do you think your brain turns into when you are using it to strengthen yourself? That's right. You're going to become strong and you're going to get better. That is exactly what happened to me. The response that I got from the one person did not like it because it was about something, someone that was close to them. But you know what? I had been practicing to become stronger, to become a person that understood my feelings. Don't worry. It gets better. Being aware means that you're going to stay tuned. You're going to be able to stay tuned to the emotions that you were experiencing at present. And maybe in the past you may not have understood those feelings, but now because you're getting a better understanding, understanding of yourself, you're going to find out, wow, you know, that really influenced my behavior, the way I used to think, the way I used to respond. But now because I'm practicing mindfulness, I don't do those things because I've become stronger. I'm going to learn how to make the connection between your feelings, your thoughts, and why you do and act the way you do. When we first started, we had a feelings wheel. Everyone did that. Are you able to name your feelings? Let's take sad. Many people are riddled with sadness. Right? But what comes with sadness? Why are some people sad? What would you say, Trish? I would say some people are sad because probably because they lost someone or... That's what I was saying. Grief. I was thinking yeah. too. Grief. Loneliness. What have we done? We've identified reasons of sadness. If we've lived for some time now, we should be able to name our feelings. Are you able to do that? Identify your feelings? Even when it's joy. I know a lot of joyful people, happy people. And they're happy because they like their job. They love their families. They love just going on adventures. So they're able to understand the connection. Have you ever experienced this feeling? You're at the park. Or let's 
take the beach because we've been it's summer and we've been talking about the beach. Have you ever felt the warmth of the beach? I'm talking about the beach's sand. Now, some of us may not like the sand. I happen to love feeling warm sand. Today, I want you to mindfully think about taking your shoes off. Yes, right now, and experiencing that sand. Are you ready? You see, you're at the beach. And you see all around you sand. And it's a beautiful day. And you're sitting down and you're observing everything that's going on. And you're feeling the warmth of the sand on your feet. How does it feel, Trish? Warm and relaxing. Yeah, yeah. Let's try another one. Same place, still at the beach. A different location or area, I should say. You're standing on the shore, and the water comes rushing on, on your feet. This time, you have your sandals, your um, wet shoes on, on. You have something on your feet now. How how does it feel, Trish? The water feels cool. Yeah. We just did what we call sensation. There are many forms of sensation. We did a taste one earlier about the delicious food on the plate. That that's your mind's ability to be able to experience feelings and for you to be able to talk about it in the present. I want you to always return to those moments that make you feel relaxed, those moments that make you feel like, wow, this feels great. And talk about those moments. Why are feelings important? Because they remind you of the information that your brain, yes, your brain, is receiving. The more that you're able to feel and be challenged with feelings, the more that that you will understand the information that you're receiving, and that's what happened to me. It wasn't that I wasn't capable of telling that the person made me feel unsafe. It was the understanding, even if I liked this person at times, I felt unsafe. And for the first time, I was able to express it. I am so proud of myself. I want you to be truer to yourself, and I want you to respond truthfully to yourself. I want you to become fluent in your being able to express your feelings. Everybody got that? We're going to be right back. Don't go anywhere. We're going to come right back. Thank <laughs> you. 
are back. And we want to talk for a moment about getting in touch with our feelings and emotion, though two different things. How we feel. You know, um, we live in a world that pressurizes us. Also, social media puts us on blast, so to speak. How so? Because if we write something in the box that says, um, I forget what it says. I would have to look at it. But Facebook will ask you a question. And so you're pressured and you start putting stuff down. Nobody tells you to do it. You just do it. And what what do you do almost instantly after you have post something? Don't we all look for the likes, right? And then if we don't have any likes or one like, we start to get down on ourselves. Because our feelings are what? Well, only you know. But is it positive if no one has pressed like? We're under pressure constantly. We put on a pretense a lot of times, and all of us can do this, by either saying we like something when we really don't, or or we put on on our other face. You know that, that one that smiles, that grins and bears it? How many of us have done that? And we say, oh, we'll just take it. Well, I want you to think about that. We need to understand why feelings are important. If you feel a certain way, get access to that. Why do you feel that way? We need to be able to become our own authentic selves. It's like asking someone, how's your day? And they say, I had a really uh, uh, bad day. They, they identify that they had a bad day. And do you go about your business or do you let them explain or do you say, I really didn't want to know? Because I want you to think about it. If it were you, how would you want the response to be to your feelings? Because when you are connected to your feelings, you're going to start relating to other people. Kind of like what we do here in group. When everybody's here, and everybody says, I can relate. Why, why do we do that? Because we hear other people. We're not isolated from feelings or lost in our translation of feelings. We come to understand and we start to be able to share our emotions. Do you remember that part of us, Trish? Yes. So... I ask today that we become emotional aware. How do you become more aware? You learn about your feelings. You learn how to talk about your feelings. How many of you think that you are there? I thought I was. And here I am, your life coach. And that's what's my feelings. But every day as a life coach, I still have a life to live outside of Vibe Talk. And I go through things, too, and I just notice because I became self-aware. And it looks scary. It looks ugly. It looks messy. I'll 
tell you, you what. Having freed yourself from the disconnection or the not saying has surely lifted bricks off of me. I feel free. And I want that for you. So the next time that you feel angry, I want you to be able to say, I feel angry, even if you have to write it for the first time. After you are dealing with your anger, when you say, this is how I feel today, I feel angry. How many of you have really taken the time to sit down and think about what your present feeling was for the day? And then the day passes, and the next day, you're going going to feel another emotion guaranteed because if you're still angry after you wake up that means that you're stuck in the anger and you need to say I feel angry number one you're aware and number two you've taken accountability for your self control of how you feel or I, I feel happy or I feel sadness or fear. Even after talking to the person, the associated my feeling unsafe with fear. That's not what I said. I said I felt unsafe. What, what are some other words for unsafe? Anybody? Um, distrust. Yes. Ah, thank you. Because that's exactly what I was saying. Unsafe, the list can go on and on, but it was distrust. If you distrust someone, it doesn't have to be followed up by fear. You could love that person and still distrust them. I've been in relationships where I love the person, the man, and couldn't trust him worth anything. Had nothing to do with being afraid of him, because if I was afraid of him, I wouldn't have been with him. So learn. Learn how to use your words. Use always a feeling. Because if you don't have one, someone else is going to take control of your feelings and tell you how you feel. You don't want that. I want you to think about looking for a feelings chart if this is your first time here today. To be able to know just like Trish just expressed so nicely, other words for unsafe. One would be distrust. One would uh, be um, detachment. Yeah. So I want you to think about that and think about your feelings and identifying them correctly. How many times have you been angry and not yelled? Anybody? A lot. Yeah. We can think about the times where we haven't yelled, but we were angry. So does it mean if we're angry, we have to yell? No. Yeah, that's not the feeling at all, right? But we can say we're angry. Sometimes we might yell. But does that mean that just because we're yelling, we're angry? Because if you're at the uh, World Series or um, Super Bowl, if you're yelling, are you angry? Most of the time. You're yelling at your team. 
you are yelling in the stadium seats because you want to win, right? It doesn't associate with anger. So use your words properly. I want you to think about the symptoms that you are having when you word associate something. See what's really going on. When I came and told the person what was really going on, they shut me down and decided to tell me that there was nothing wrong with me. Imagine that. Why am I sharing these experiences with you? Because we have not challenged ourselves enough to deal with our feelings. The person could not deal with what I was saying because they are in denial. I don't want you to be in denial. I want you to really think about how you feel. I want you to be able to pick a feeling. Trisha and I talked about unhappiness or sadness. There are many sad people. But you can pick a feeling. You can pick a feeling of excitement. And let that be your goal of feeling excited. Look forward to something that excites you. When I think of excitement, you know what excitement is to me? Two things. When I see creation, when I see a little tiny hummingbird go to a feeder. And I have just witnessed that. That is exciting for me. You know another thing that excites me? Disneyland. So if you're going to think about your feelings, you can think about the goal of where you want to be. What's excitement? for you want you to experience that always seek support and if people are showing you that they're not supportive of you I want you to be able to come back to Vibe Talk where we will support you always express emotions in a very, very healthy way. I struggled to express emotions in a healthy way. Because sometimes my emotions were all over the place. And now because of Vibe Talk, because of the training that I've had, because of the training that I bring to you all, I now express myself in healthier ways. So I want you to name your emotion, think about your emotion, and what do we do with our emotions, such as excitement, such as sadness, joys, triumphs. We're going to Tell somebody, right, how we feel. How many of you have ever kept exciting news to yourself? Anybody? Anybody ever experienced that? It was so exciting that I'm just going to keep it to myself. No, we tend to want to tell somebody, right? Right? I want all of you you to think about your emotion as you are driving whatever you're doing at this very present moment I want you to think about it dealing with your emotions can be a real challenge but you know what helps reflection prayer I'm a praying person writing, painting, journaling. Find out how to process your emotion. And always pay attention to 
excuse me, your brain system. That's why I want all of you to draw your brain and what you feel presently and then add to any feelings you've ever felt. And I want you to write that around your brain that you've drawn. Here's why. Because it's going to help you to be able to look at what we do don't see. Sometimes we are in denial of our feelings, and that is exactly what happened. Good morning, and welcome to Vibe Talk Facing the Lion podcast. Where are you listening in from? Think about word association with your feelings. If something made you happy, why were you happy? You know, they say Disneyland is the happiest place on earth, but when I think of happy places, no, it isn't. No thumbs down to Disneyland because I love the place. But I've experienced other happy places, starting with myself, being able to be happy with myself and the decisions that I make. That's a feeling of excitement. Knowing how I felt instead of having headaches and not being able to say something because you're afraid or you feel some sort of way. And I have to put how I felt, why I didn't say anything, and I could kick myself because I didn't say anything. I'm challenging myself to speak up in a healthy way. We all have different things that we feel. Why, though, are we even talking about this? Because it has to do with your mental and emotional health. Stay aware. There's two things I always tell my kids, my grown kids even now. Be aware of your surroundings. And also, I love them. Hearing that is Every day makes them aware, makes them understand. But you say that so much that they start to imprint that like it's worn on a shirt. So by you you being emotionally aware and by us, that we challenge you to be more aware of your feelings, you're going to wear it like a shirt, or will you? Do you know where our feelings come from? What do you think, Trish? Where do our feelings come from? And all of those who are out there can be interactive as well. Where do our feelings come from? I would say feelings come from experiences. Yeah. Our feelings, I want you to. Touch your heart. Put your hand on your heart. What is in our heart is what we carry out. What is in our heart is what we carry out. This is how we feel. That desire of how we feel becomes fermented. It's in our heart. It is the motivating factor of why we react to it. Our brain sends infor- our our heart sends the information. You know, it's like I want an ice cream. I want an ice cream. Strawberry ice cream sounds really good. So what do I do? I thought about it so much because my heart really wanted that. Before long, I've got me ice cream. That's your brain sending information to you. But here is the deepest part of us. Our kidneys 
filter out our feelings. Did you guys know that? Your kidney is your deepest part of you. That's why in some places, and I'm not here to do a clinical study, our kidneys carry a lot of toxins and has to be filtered, right? Sometimes we can have so much toxicity in a physical manner that we need new kidney because we can live with one. We might need a new one, but that is where we carry the deepest part of our emotion. You don't believe me? Look it up. So, how are you doing? Are you hiding your feelings? When you hide your feelings, it starts to emotionally break you down. That is exactly what happened to me. Think about this if you were, Will, a partner. Now, now, you repair men, repair women, you think about a pipe being blocked or clogged and it's building up and it's building up and it's building up. What happens? Well, if you've got a plumbing problem, it's more than likely something has caused that. Remember I said pipe? So when you think about an overflowing toilet, usually it's something is blocking that toilet from flushing, right? I had to think about something so that you guys would really get it. And you try to flush that toilet when it's blocked, and lo and behold, there's an overflow, and you got a flood. Imagine what's pouring out are your feelings. Guess why? The pipe has been blocked by something, and you've got to get a plumber to fix it. You are your own plumber to be able to fix your emotions that have been building up. Because you see, if you don't fix it, it's going to burst. So, so blocking your feelings. Stay emotionally well. What do you think about that? We're going to be right back with Trisha's treasure. We'll be right back. Facing the lion is always, always positive. And someone asked you today, as we are going to be facing our lions or challenges of the week, what did you face this We're back with Trish and Trish's Treasures. We talked about how when babies learn how to crawl and learn how to walk, uh, that made me think about muscle memory on how muscle memory is basically how your brain works when you pick up things when you're walking. Basically, it's your whole function of your body. That's what muscle memory is. And I think about that on a emotional level as well. When you feel something, uh, it can come from a certain experience that happened to you or the memory of it. It's just like a triggering memory. That's what triggering is also. It's like a muscle memory, a reaction to certain things that happen. And the reaction 
continues to happen because it's what you are used to. It's what your brain is programmed to react as. And you can also change the way you react to something. And how we change that is we can choose to address or acknowledge the feelings that we do feel. And I had a fear of eating cantaloupe. I know (laughs) some people may think, cantaloupe? What's wrong with cantaloupe? But I do not like the taste of cantaloupe. I just do not like it. When I was a kid, I ate the wrong part of the cantaloupe where the seeds were, that squishy part, and I just hated it ever since. So my grandma came over and she bought us some cantaloupe and I was like, oh, I don't like cantaloupe. And she's like, it's good for you. Uh, It's very good for you. And she explained like how it's good for me and what it can help me with as a woman and things like that. And I told her, I don't like it. She said, just try it, just try it. And I tried it. I still didn't like it. (laughs) I still didn't like it. But still, I got over the fear of when I see a cantaloupe, I just, like, back away because, no, I don't like it. I'm more, uh, what's the word? I'm more calm when it comes to that sort of fruit. And that's how it is with emotions. When your reaction is normally when I see someone that I don't like, I just treat them or I feel I treat them in a negative way or I just don't talk to them or I I automatically judge them in a negative way. We can change that into when I see someone that I don't agree with or someone that I had a disagreement with, we can always have, there's another way to address certain situations. Because when there's a negative feeling, there's always a positive feeling. Negativity is not the only feeling that there is. And I enjoyed listening to the video today because it made me think about the feelings that I have from where I'm not relaxed, there is always something that can relax me. When I am angry, there's always something that can calm me. When I am feeling sad, there's always something that can bring me comfort, bring me peace. When I feel anxious, there is always something that can bring me joy and happiness. So all of this is to know your feelings and how to balance yourself because it is balance. Your muscle memory of feelings and your emotions is a perfect balance to who you are as a person. So get to know yourself because it will help you handle your emotions and understand your emotions. That was very powerful. Thank you. If you want to hear more of Trisha's treasures, all the information is here for you, especially on our Facebook page where we are live, by the way. Um, Look on our YouTube page. It's there. Trisha is also responsible for our music. Her intro and outro music. Go find out more on Trisha's treasures. In closing, we need to stop the falsehoods that negative and positive emotions are in one category and it's either like a 
or I should say that the negative emotions are something to be feared. Because not all of us have positive emotions. Here's what we have to think about or choose to think about. That our emotions are not healthy when we don't talk about them. It becomes like that broken pipe or that block. So let's define the negative emotions along with the positive emotions. Negative emotions, the first thing I think about is anger. Is that necessarily a negative emotion? If someone hits your car because they were going too fast and not looking where they were going, that would cause some anger. Is that wrong? You be the judge of that. But you understand that when you feel angry, you understand why you're angry because your car just got hit by the person that wasn't watching where they were going. So so you can resolve that. It becomes a Negative when it is unchecked. Because who does it hurt? hurt? The person with the negative feeling. And it can become negative for you and those around us. Our feelings don't always have to be happy, joy, ecstatic. Because we are human. I challenge you this day and forevermore to become in your feelings, about your feelings, to know them, to discover them, and to name them. I want to thank you for listening to us. And before we go, this topic is all on challenging our feelings. What have you learned and discovered in today's podcast on this finally Friday facing the lion podcast all in our feelings doesn't that have a whole new meaning when I say that now all in our feelings what you're feeling and what did you discover about yourself Trish Today, I learned that you can relate to feelings when you actually try to address your feelings and acknowledge the feelings that you're feeling. Because I used to say that I don't get angry. I'm not this sad person, but I don't know what sadness feels like. I don't get irritated, but I do. I do. <laughs> and some uh, I'm learning to tell people how I'm actually feeling. And the fact that I allow myself to feel those things and have self-control and tell them it's okay, I get angry too, it helps them realize, you know what, she's just like me. She gets angry and she knows how to control herself. And it it helps people learn how to deal with their emotions as well. So that's what I learned. And my feelings here today was informative. I learned a lot about feelings. And sometimes I always tell myself that I always have to have this optimistic mindset, but it's okay to wake up and still and not be happy, but not to live in it. Not to live in unhappiness is strength and to find the joy. It's a good thing. Thank you for that. For me, I learned that with the experiences that I've experienced in the last week and a half is that that 
I didn't die because I finally let out what triggers me and I was able to name the person and I was able to name what triggered me about that person because I'm not responsible for what the other person thinks. I, I know just like you said that that person has to come to the realization that they might be hiding their feelings, knowing what I said was true. And I think about that. So today, I discovered that part of myself that it wasn't as bad as I thought it would ever be, but I've grown up a lot. And here's the catch to it, too, is that we might not know what to say in earlier times, but the older we get, the more complicated our emotions become. And so we're able to have many different feelings from experience. And now we learn how to deal with these new feelings. Sometimes we don't know why we feel the way we do. There's no need to feel ashamed or, or to... Uh, Discipline yourself, but I want, I want you to be able to take this and help somebody with this. Because some of you are experiencing some of the things we've talked about today. And many of you have gone through many of the things. Discovering the parts of yourself and understanding as you get older, your feelings, they're not complicated as you think they are. It's just becoming more aware. Discovering parts of your feelings. That's the challenge. Until next time, Trisha and I bid you a great weekend and thank you so much for making this podcast on your favorites list. Go visit our YouTube page. Tell us what you think. And Challenge yourself. We'll see you next week. Face my eyes. Face my eyes. Change is hard for me because I'm not focused on me. So what do you need to change about that? You need to focus on yourself. How do we do that? We don't become blind to everything around us, but we have an incredible desire to help ourselves. You know how people say, may I help you? Ask yourself. May I help you? Give yourself permission to help yourself.